Welcome everybody to 52 Living Ideas. Tonight is the Analex. We'll be covering book two, chapters nine through 18. Uh, we'll start with reading nine, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, so James, would you mind reading uh, your version of the Analex uh, and group, uh, book two, uh, chapters nine, 10, 11, and 12? Yeah, it's translated by James Leggy. Um, number nine, the master said, I have talked with Hui for a whole day, and he has not made any objection to anything I said, as if he were stupid. He has retired, and I have examined his conduct when away from me and found him able to illustrate my teachings. We, oui, he is not stupid. Uh, could you go through uh, 10, 11, okay. and 12 as well? I'm sorry. No, no problem. 10. The master said, see what a man does. Mark his motives. Examine in what things he rests. How can a man conceal his character? How can a man conceal his character? Number 11, the master said, if a man keeps cherishing his old knowledge so as to continually to be acquiring new, he may be a teacher of others. Number 12, the master said, the accomplished scholar is not a utensil. Thank you, James. Um, and so next up is Margarita. Would you? So 9 to 11 or 9 to 12? Uh, 9 to 12. OK. So I read in Bahasa, Kong Huchu berkata, so Confucian, a Confucius is called Kong Huchu in Indonesia. Kong Huchu berkata, sepanjang hari aku berbicara dengan Hui, yang walaupun bodoh, tidak membantahku. Aku renungkan perilakunya setelah kami berpisah, dan kusadari bahwa kebungkamannya mengungkapkan makna yang cukup jelas. Hui ternyata bukan seorang yang bodoh. Kong Huchu berkata, simaklah motivasinya. Amati arah yang ditujunya. Perhatikan apakah ia merasa ringan menjalaninya. Maka mana mungkin ia bisa menyembunyikan dirinya. Mana mungkin ia bisa mengelabui orang lain. Kong Huchu berkata, mengotak atik hal-hal lama dan menyimpulkan hal-hal baru. Itulah yang membuat seseorang menjadi guru. Kong Huchu berkata, orang budiman tidak sama dengan alat. Thank you, Margarita. Uh, so, Jason. Yeah. Oh, uh, if Kevin wants to read in Chinese, probably. That Ke no, actually, good. yes. Uh, forgive me for not asking. Uh, Kevin, would you like to read in Chinese? Versus our oh, chapters. Do you want me to show, show the screen so you can yeah. read? Do, do you want me to show the screen? Uh, it's uh, okay. Up to you. I can. I have got it. Let me show the screen. Probably that would be. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You can show the screen. Yeah. Okay. So start from two point nine. Uh, 2.9, yeah, yeah. Um, it's year. Uh, and okay <clears throat> so uh let me uh, read my translation okay uh 2.9 uh the master said i have talked 
Okay, Hui, okay, deal with the person Hui. I think that's the first time we deal with this person. So, and uh, Jason, Hui, would you mind making it a little bigger? Oh, okay, sorry, okay. Is that good? Yes, thank you. Okay. So um, Hui, uh, let me see. This word Hui, sometimes called Yuan, sometimes called Yan Yuan. Okay, so we will see this person, he's Confucius. Uh, model student and the, the best of the best. But historically, we don't know what he accomplished. The only thing we know is he's very poor and died early. Uh, one year before, I think Confucius died at 72 years old. When he was 71, uh, Hui died and break, broke his heart. And the, at age seven, the next year, Confucius died. So Hui is, whenever we talk about Hui, Hui, it's always good. All right, so remember this person. And for now, we will see him uh, quite often. <clears throat> mm. The master said, I have talked to Hui for a whole day and he has not met any objection to anything I said as if he was stupid. Okay, so that's an important message because uh, kind of to tell you don't, make a gesture to your teacher, okay? Because you argue with your teacher, you may look smart, but he said, he never argue with me. He never make objection to me. Look like he is stupid. But after he withdraw, he, okay, I examine his personal conduct and find him able to illustrate my teaching. Indeed, Hui is not stupid, okay? So he doesn't talk back doesn't ask further question, he just listened. But he really got what Confucius teaches by Confucius seeing his behavior. He really illust illustrate uh, Confucius teaching. So in this point, Confucius think Yan Hui is not stupid. Actually, he's very smart. Okay, L later on he would keep talking about uh, Yan Hui or Hui. Uh, Okay, there are many names, Hui or Yan Yuan or Yan Hui, that's all his name. I think his last name is Yan, okay. 2.10, <clears throat> the master said, what, watch what he is doing, observe why he is doing, examine what his intention is. How can a person conceal his character? How can a person conceal his character? So this one, basically, he talked about this sentence twice, okay? How can a person conceal his character? How can a person conceal his character? In Chinese, it's very famous. It will say, ren yan shou zai, ren yan shou zai. That means, you know, how can you cheat me? How can you conceal your character? In general, we believe Confucius can, uh, if you read the uh, Great Learning, uh, I think in Western philosophy also have a question like uh, when you are alone, uh, does that make sense to be moral, right? If you are Robinson Crusoe, you are in island by yourself, should I be moral, right? Uh, Confucius answer definitely is yes, because nobody can hide your heart. So if you did something bad, even you are alone, when you walk out, you will feel like everybody look at you through your heart. That's the teaching in Confucius. Uh, if you review the great learning, you talk about this. So that's an important message. So here, Confucius, this, this sentence is very famous, okay, very important. The three sentences here, watch what he is doing. He's talking about the present, what he's doing now, okay? And observe why he is doing Okay, what's the reason he's doing this? Okay, that's his past. Exam what his intention is. Talking about his future. So by look at the person in this three way, what he's doing now, what his past, what he's going to do, then nobody can hide from me. That's a confusion said. You may disagree, but that's confusion said. 211. <clears throat> The master said, reviewing what you have learned and acquire new knowledge, you can be a teacher. So here has a, 
different kind of uh, interpretation because the word are er here. Because this word in Chinese is, you can be called as and, or you can uh, interpret as in order to. So some interpretation will say, reviewing what you have learned in order to get the new knowledge, you can be a teacher. Or I prefer the other way is consider as end. So that means study what you have learned and acquire new knowledge. Then you can be a teacher because you, when you teach, you cannot only teach the old stuff. You have to learn the new stuff to be a teacher. So that's my, the way I prefer. I think that should be this way. But a lot, you may see uh, uh, some uh, translation or Chinese interpreter or consider this word er, as in order to. So uh, that, that's up to you how you are going to understand. Twelve, that's one, this one very short, but also very important. So the master said, a junzi, okay, let's again talk about junzi, wouldn't be a vessel. So uh, I think there's one version called uh, junzi is not a utensil. I think that's also right, qi, okay, means uh, tool or utensil. But I think it should, I, I prefer to translate as vessel. We see this word um, in Dao De Jing. Uh, I still think it should be vessel because uh, it's related to your capability. So uh, one famous uh, saying is metaphysics okay, is not vessel and uh, physics is vessel. That means metaphysics is uh, beyond the physical world. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I think we will see this word many times later. So, you know, uh, uh, that's what I'd like to point out. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I think that's, that. oh, one thing about this one, uh, not be a vessel. Uh, one message is, Junzi, okay, should be, a, it's an overall training. You are not just serve for one purpose. For example, I'm pretty good in doing accounting. Okay, I'm excellent doing this. That's not Junzi. Junzi have an overall personality, overall strength. Okay, but doesn't mean you are you can do accounting, you can do math, you can do philosophy, you can do it. no, not in this way. That means you are a whole person. You don't be used as just one function, one function person. You are the uh, person, a complete person. I think that's important. And I think in uh, next uh, chapter, uh, book three, okay, probably book three, when he comment, when Confucius comments the ancient uh, politician, uh, he will use this word. He's just a vessel. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I found number 12 to be very interesting well, as well. Um, and it speaks to kind of being the original generalist. Uh, so uh, anyway, um, Aman, would you like to comment on verses uh, nine through 12? And then uh, oh, go ahead. I've go ahead. got my I've got my voice back. So I'm e eager to talk. Uh, good, thank good. You, and we're thank eager you guys to listen. for having me. Um, I like this format. I, I, it's my first time actually getting to see it in action. And I do think this is a good way of taking bite-sized chunks because certain lessons are reiterated and re-examined and demonstrated by sort of multiple approaches to the same topic. Uh, alone, number nine, um, talking about Yunhui, it, it doesn't... All it really tells you is that Yunhui is the exemplar. He is the virtuoso of embodying the lessons of Confucius. But then you move on through 10, 11, and 12, and you see this reiteration of what does that mean to be a virtuoso of his teachings? You are, you know, exemplary in your doings in your reasoning, in your intentions. You are um, reviewing 
your old knowledge in, in order to and also acquiring new knowledge. This idea of self-review or reflection is um, caught up in this idea of cultivating the character of oneself, which obviously Hume Wei has done well. Um, and then this last passage about the Chunsa it would not be a vessel. There is a later passage where I believe it's Zaiwa who gets the master's ire with a backhanded compliment saying, you are a vessel, describing him in one, you know, terse term. And he takes it as such a compliment. Standing alone, you would see that and just go, oh, okay. But having this as sort of a precursor to it, you go, oh, that's a backhanded compliment or an insult in disguise that mm. this one man was just a little too dense to really absorb. That's later to come. In this, what you get are a couple of things. One, the notion that the exemplary character, the, the virtuoso, the junsa, is constantly working at themselves. They are constantly improving themselves and they are deeply social. It's funny when Jason talks about Robinson Crusoe and this idea of moral for its own sake, independent of the world. Um, the Confucian idea does not exist independent of the world. It is deeply and profoundly grounded in that social world. You have these characteristics, you have these traits, you have these behaviors because you are interdependent with other people and you cannot escape that no matter how hard you try. Um, now that's not to say there weren't Confucian recluses, but even hermits rely on the society around them in order for certain things in order to exist. I don't think Hermitage was anywhere within Confucius ideals. It was more of the last resort when you live in a world gone mad. And that's really where this idea of you behave morally, you behave correctly always. If it puts you within the good graces of a society or without or outside the good graces of a society, because if everyone could do this even just a bit, it would make for a more harmonious society. Excellent comments as always. I do want to come back to this idea that uh, how it's, you know, integrating more information and, and knowledge as virtue uh, that you had spoken about with number 11. But I see James has his uh, hand up, and if anybody else would like to comment on verses or chapters nine through twelve, uh, go ahead and type exclamation point in the chat. And uh, but James, please. Thank you, Joseph. Um, yeah, this uh, these these four I think relate back to number uh, to number four, which uh, is uh, I thought was a really interesting one because it's kind of like a summary of intellectual virtues, uh, which I which I translated uh, with the help of Google, Google to uh, learning, firmness, certainty, understanding, total comprehension, faultlessness. And this number nine would be, I think, related to faultlessness. Uh, the uh, way was, uh, way, way had comprehension. He had uh, total comprehension. Uh, and and uh, so the, the point here is that uh, when somebody comprehends something totally, that is learning, and you don't have to make an objection when you comprehend something. In other words, something that is already perfectly comprehended from the, from the master is not necessarily something that should ever be uh, contested. And it's just rude, right, if you do that. And uh, so that is, uh, that is uh, in a sense, reinforcing the concept of faultlessness, that anyone who is faultless will learn perfectly. And that's, 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 I think, the point. Uh, and not be stupid. So that was interesting. You can give the impression of being stupid or mute. Uh, you know, in other words, uh, 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 people used to call, uh, I think deaf people at one time were called dummies. And because uh, I have a deaf 
brother and sister. And that, so I, I learned something about that. And um, so it's not, uh, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, uh, silence is not stupid. Silence can be uh, uh, comprehension. Number 10 uh, is about observation, I think. Observing reasons and motivations in other people. Always observing others. And because uh, they always have their own reasons, their own motivations, they're not yours. Uh, and, and, and learn by what methods a person can disguise his character because people do. And uh, so, so also learn that. Don't just learn the, uh, don't just observe, but also learn the methods of disguising character. Uh, number 11, uh, cherishing old knowledge is a means of acquiring new knowledge as a means of acquiring new knowledge is how one becomes a teacher. So in other words, if you have old knowledge, if you have a wealth of knowledge to, to draw on, but if you're capable of acquiring new knowledge with that foundation, that, that pretty much describes, that describes a, a, a teacher, a, pers a person who can be a teacher. Number 12, uh, a person should not be a, an educated person should not be a tool. Well, this means being uh, uh, alert and awake. In other words, don't allow yourself to be utilized uh, as a tool. It's the idea of uh, uh, another person should always be, be considered, should, not be, should always be considered an end, but not a means. So in other words, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the, the uh, neither should you permit yourself to be used this way, but you shouldn't try to utilize other people as tools. So especially, and I, I, that's, that's debatable. I mean, there's a certain logic to sociopathy, but, uh, uh, but uh, I think, uh, but the idea of like protecting yourself, yes, definitely. If you're an educated person, protect your, uh, protect your purposes. Thank you. Excellent comments. Um, you know, I like to, I see, Will, you've uh, typed uh, exclamation point in the chat, um, but uh, I, I very much appreciated the comment with chapter nine, uh, this idea of remaining silent uh, and the importance of silence. Uh, you know, sometimes we look at people that talk a lot and, you know, that we sometimes think that you know, wow, this person's brilliant. And really, sometimes the people that actually comprehend the most are the ones that say the least. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I, I think that, uh, and it, there's also a certain degree of humility that can be demonstrated, not to say that somebody that's silent uh, always is understanding of what's going on. But uh, if you understand something, and if you agree with it, uh, there's not much reason to speak up unless you just want to be heard. So I, I think that that's a very interesting point. Um, you know, I, I'll come back to uh, points that you made about uh, 10, 11, and 12 as well. Um, and I really liked how you phrased the idea of, you know, not being a tool, not, uh, not allowing people just to use you uh, as an end. Um, and, and I think that that's, there's, there's something very important about that, that I want to come back to as well, as far as specialization and, and, uh, how we use people in today's world, uh, specifically often we do, uh, just use them and, uh, encourage people to specialize in one particular area so that we have their skill set. Um, and that's not necessarily the best thing for that individual. Uh, and it's somewhat uh, exploits the worker in certain cases, sometimes. Uh, so that's just one thought I had, but Will, go ahead. Hi. Uh, uh, yeah, this is, um, this has been a great, um, uh, couple of chapters here. Um, the, uh, the 2.9, um, let's see, uh, yeah, the, the book I'm reading um, referred to um, 
book nine, chapter 11, which is about Yan Hui. And in that one, he's like almost helpless without Confucius. And so uh, like he, so I think the, the point is that, that like he just feels just enormous devotion to Confucius. And, and I guess that's probably why he's uh, quiet. It's just, he is just like, just feels such incredible devotion that, that he just, um, when Confucius is talking, he is just like 100% absorbed in what he has to say. Um, uh, that's the message that I got. Um, and uh, um, that past, present, future thing was was uh, great to hear. I hadn't heard that in, in the commentary I read. And um, um, on 211, um, Dasan, the Korean scholar, he has a, a very original, uh, apparently he's the only person that um, translate it, it uh, this way. He says that um, uh, renewing what you've learned and acquiring new, new, new knowledge is what makes being a teacher great, um, is like that's why you should be a teacher. So he has um, a different take on that one. Um, and uh, yeah, 212. Um, yeah, I was I was just thinking about how like um, like a doctor would see everything through a, a um, like a how does something affect your health and like uh, somebody who has another specialty might see it through their specialty. So maybe that's the message. If you're if you're too specialized, maybe you um, tend to only see things through the lens of your specialty. I'm just sort of guessing a little bit there, but um, that's the way I, I think that might, might be uh, going. Anyway, great to be here. Thanks. Thanks for your comments, Will. And uh, yeah, again, coming back to number 12 is that maybe we start to identify the person with what they do rather than what they are. Um, if they become too specialized about it with a particular skill set. Uh, so, and that's, that's a very unfortunate uh, place to be for the individual. Uh, and it's also unfortunate that we would look at an individual and in that through those, through that lens. So uh, I appreciate the comments um, as always. Uh, Kevin. I guess Jade if I had off of me. Oh, forgive Jade. me. Uh, Jade, yeah, I did. Welcome, welcome back, Jade. Well, welcome back, Jade. Yes. So I'm not I'm not the only one who noticed uh, you coming back. So we're happy to have you back. Uh, we we would like to hear you though. Can you hear me? Now we yep. can. There we go. All right. So it's good to be back. Um, offering my two cents. I'm kind of out of the loop, but in the loop. Um, it's interesting that there is a component of ethics in today's um, discussion, because even this morning, um, I had a conversation with someone about um, the world kind of being a little cruel. Um, and my, um, what would I say? My conclusion was is basically a large part of why the world is so cruel is because people are cruel. And um, kind of because our ethics, I don't know what they are anymore. I don't know that there is a universal, like there's universal um, shock and awe, but I don't think they're universal ethics that kind of guide us. And I find that um, what Confucius is saying is very closely linked to what um, the Bible kind of tries or what I'm sensing the Bible tries to say in the fact that um, your loyalty goes to God first which kind of makes your ethics somewhat stable and consistent. And they're not situational or based um, on what serves you. Like there are people who will just all of a sudden decide that something's okay because I don't know, it, it helps their agenda. And I think right now the, the ethics are so um, mobile 
because we're kind of maybe modern world is kind of the place where we're always moving the goalposts because we just want to do whatever we want to do. And if your ethics are not consistent, nothing you do is ever really wrong. There's always a way to justify it. Um, and then there's also the thing of, um, I don't remember who was saying it, but it kind of um, riffs on what I was already thinking is um, the concept of brilliance or consensus. And, you know, with people coming in and people starting to say, oh, this is, this is so brilliant, da, 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 or it getting, I think sometimes it's a misnomer. We'll call someone or something brilliant and it's just the fact that it's consensus. And because so many people have agreed to it, we decide that it's a good idea. And um, I feel like, you know, there are a lot of charismatic molecular people who can, you know, make something that's awful seem good. And a lot of the time, um, charismatic speech will trump logical reasoning. And often it kind of gets people to consent and with the mass consensus to things that actually don't serve us. So I find, especially now, Maybe it's always been, I haven't been around this world like since the dawn of time, but so I can only really comment on now, but it kind of seems as though we're creating a world order where it's kind of, um, where it's kind of set up where we can, where it's almost more socially acceptable to sin against ourselves and others, basically cause harm and trauma to ourselves and others through our behaviors than it is to set a goalpost that that's, that can kind of intentionally make certain things right or wrong. It's just, it's just very difficult, I feel like, um, with what Confucius is saying, I, I, I agree with it. But I think in modern day, I don't know how, how, embrace, how much people will embrace his idea of ethics. I don't know if any of that made sense, but that's, that's what, what came out of my mouth. I think you're hitting on one of the prime things about that one of the differences that we've seen with the Tao and Confucius, to be honest, that when you're talking about ethics or virtue, I mean, it, this is very prescriptive, uh, which is very different than our Tao meetups uh, in the past. So yes, and there have been, in certain cases, I, I think, and Aman could speak to this, uh, or Jason could speak to this much better than I have, how uh, can um, but there has been an adoption of Confucius principles in China so that there there is some you know th there there it, it is being accepted uh, now whether uh, I don't know if there is a universal way of approaching uh, virtue anyway uh, so I you know the universal truth so to speak so I agree with you on that um, but I think that you hit on some of the major points, some of the major differences that exist. Um, uh, and uh, Aman is kind enough to remind me that China, Korea, uh, Japan, and most of the far, far East. So, so it is having an influence uh, on cultures today, um, but it, it is very much based, rooted in virtue and it's very prescriptive. Uh, and as we go through this text, we'll start to see this even more. But I think you hit on one of the major, major points that it, how it differs from what the Tao, uh, you know, was when, during our Tao meetup. And that's something that's been uh, striking to me as well. So great comments. It's wonderful to have you back, Jade. Um, and hopefully you can become a little bit more regular. And I'm not trying to put pressure on you, but I just throw it out there. Um, so I have Kevin, and I've followed by uh, James. I believe you're the next person. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Uh, can you continue about the chapter two nine? Yes. And uh, the old thing called silent is golden. It's uh, still um, valued in the Far East. And like Aman mentioned that, and uh, I, I recall when I was a child and learned at, at a school, some students, you know, it's so naughty, they play around, you not notice on the class, but it is good, good mark, they're smart. Some students quiet, it is, it is just, but it is still good too. 
some student they have good question i learn from it from you know not just the question for them so i i see a dynamic about the personality and the individual uh, is, is so different i want to contact connect uh, chapter uh, two, uh, uh, verse 211 and 212 uh, I'm used Chinese. When Gu Er Zi Xing, can you review what you learned and uh, get a new knowledge? You cannot be a teacher. I use it metaphor metaphorical. It's like snowball. You keep rolling, you can roll it bigger, bigger. I feel these days or our education or from um, teaching we lack this kind of uh, mindset we know the old not we have all knowledge we learn they didn't give a pass or bridge to uh, for new knowledge ideally it is it's you from your uh, exist knowledge you could what's the next could be this that way if you're learning that pass you're going to learn uh you memorize very solid, and also you build your knowledge tree. So that's why how connect to the twelve. Because Junzi Bu Qi would Junzi would not be a tool or vessel. So it's not just one physical object. I learned this is one of apple. So I don't consider orange. It's a difference. Also fruit. So what's the different? So you get from apple to orange. Okay, that got skin. They need to rip off. Also, the inside is different. So the, the, if we learn from the comparative or something, the knowledge would be different. One thing, a last thing I will notice from my kids uh, learning. They learn something very specific. They, they might just like narrow down so uh, it, it didn't think about a little after box not even out of box only for this if you talk something else it, it's fine my own too i see if you can learn one thing it can also get other thing but that would be great thank you thank you um so in the interest of time thank you for those comments kevin in the interest of time, I see that we have a couple hands up. Um, we're going to read the next section. However, if you wish to comment on this section, please do. Uh, but we we're, we're just trying to keep on a schedule um, in order to kind of finish hopefully three sections an evening. Uh, otherwise, we'd be moving through the text a little too slow. And so uh, for the next chapters, we'll be covering, is it 13 through 16 you selected, Jason, I believe? So uh, if anybody would like to read uh, their version, uh, James, uh, you did wonderful yeah. last mm -hmm. time. Uh, okay. It would be very, mu very much appreciated if you would read this time, 13 through 16. Okay. And uh, then anybody else that would like to read as well uh, as Margaretha and, uh, and I don't know if Will would like to read, but I don't mean to ignore Jade and Alice. I know you both have your hands up and I promise I'll come back to you. Okay, number 13. Zhigong asked what constituted the superior man. The master said, he acts before he speaks and afterwards, speaks according to his actions. Number 14, the master said, the superior man is Catholic and not partisan. The mean man is partisan and not Catholic. 15, the master said, learning without thought is labor lost. Thought without learning is perilous. 16, the master said, the study of strange doctrines is injurious indeed. Thank you. Thank you, James. Um, Margaretha and Will, I don't know if you want to read your version. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I know that 
uh, Jason does like your version, so. Uh, I can read in Bahasa. Okay, thank you. The 16, yeah? Yes. So, Sukung bertanya tentang Satria. Konghucu menjawab, mendahulukan tindakan daripada bicara. Konghucu berkata, seorang Satria merengkuh semua, tidak membeda-bedakan. Orang biasa memilih-milih dan tidak merengkuh semuanya. Konghucu berkata, belajar tanpa berpikir adalah sia-sia. Berpikir tanpa belajar adalah hampa. Konghucu berkata, menyerang secara berlebihan sesungguhnya merugikan. That's it. Thank you very much, Margarita. Um, well, would you mind reading right. Thank sure, you. No yeah. Um, all right. Uh, two thirteen. Zigong asked about the noble person. Confucius replied, "He puts his words into action first. He utters his words after the action." And sorry, how how far am I going? To sixteen. To sixteen. Chapter fourteen. The master said, the noble person enters into relationships through virtue and not through power. The petty person enters into relationships through power and not through virtue. 15, the master said, if one studies but does not think, one will be easily deceived. If one thinks but does not study, one will be in danger. And 16, the master said, to devote oneself to unorthodox learning is only harmful. That's it. Actually, if you could put that uh, version in the chat, I really did like that quite a, yeah. quite a, quite a bit. I, I, I compared it to some of the other translations and uh, I liked it. So Jason. So, uh, uh, Kevin, you want to read the Chinese? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. For saying that. Um, <laughs> Zi Gong Wen Jun Zhi Zi Yue, Xie Xing Qi Ye, Ao, Er Hou Chong Zi. 214. Zi Yue, Jun Zi, Zou Er Bu Bi, Xiao Neng Bi Er Bu Zou. 15. Zi Yue, Alright, thank you. Um, so, um, okay, let me, uh, um, Margarita, can, can you tell me what do you translate on the 214? Uh, they say Junzi. What 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 does your translation? Uh, fourteen. Just a sec. Yeah. I think it's Satri. Oh, oh no! What did I do? Two fourteen. <laughs> just a sec. I just click something else. Oh, Two fourteen. Uh, Sat. Wait, no. Satria. What do they mean? Satria is like Hinduism, the Satria. So it's like people who fight, who have this courtesy and virtuous. Oh, okay, like a sage. Like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, more about Satria, the sage is like Brahman. Oh, okay, like a higher, not, not yeah. as good as a sage, yeah. but as a good person. Okay, yeah, good courage good and on. virtues, yeah. Okay, okay, some, 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 sounds interesting. And then I like a comment on, uh, Wales uh, translation actually it's pretty interesting. For example, uh, I will talk about but like the previous one, like uh, being a good teacher. Uh, 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 I think the previous one we talk about the reviewing what you have learned and acquiring new knowledge. You can be the teacher. I translate the word by word, but in Wales version said uh, you that's what make a teacher great. When I heard about this, I said that's not right because in this sentence, it, Confucius, the, the text doesn't say 
They just say, can be a teacher. But if I read in its tone, right? Uh, because it's not a novel, it's just a one tense, but I just try to understand the tone. Sounds like Confucius set a, a high bar for a teacher. So in this way, uh, if you translate as that's what make a teacher great or make a great teacher is not wrong. You know? So actually really catch the tone if, if I want to read this way. That's why I think that's interesting. And the later on, I also find interest translation you know, in uh, Will's version. So let me read on the uh, 13, <coughs> Zigong again. I think if you remember on the previous section, we talk about Zigong many times, right? Uh, the one is just to remind everyone, uh, uh, Zigong was poor when he was young and they make a lot of money, okay, when he later. So he asked Confucius if you were not flatter when you were poor and then you never proud, okay, you are not proud when you are rich. Is that great? Confucius, yeah, that's great. But you know, it better be blah, 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 be happy when you were poor, practice the and the, when you were rich, right? And then Zigong immediately quote from the uh, 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 the book of old, right? Say that like, like a firing, like a polish. So Confucius knows, you know, you have a, so blah, 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 Confucius said, Zigong, you are great. From now on, you can study the book of old. That's the Zigong, okay? Smart, become rich, and then Confucius say, you can study uh, the book old. So that means Zigong is smart and he's pretty good in talking, okay? Language, okay? That's his expertise. So that's why if you understand, then you will understand why Confucius have this kind of answer. When Zigong asked about Junzi, how to become a Junzi, the master, Master said, he act before he speaks and the F word speak after to his action. So his, his comment is don't talk too much, right? You do first, then talk, okay? So because Zigong, he is good in language. That's why Confucius give him a warning, okay? Don't talk too much, imply. You do, do something, act first before you talk, you speak, and afterward speak according to his action. Only speak what you did, don't talk, don't break, don't talk too much. That's Confucius' suggestion to Zigong. 214, the master said the Junzi is all embracing, not partisan, partisan. The small man is partisan, not or embrace it. So uh, I, that's why I like to come, uh, uh, this kind of uh, language I find out on the book seven, book 13, uh, there's many times Confucius like to compare. Junzi, which is the role model the, uh, of, uh, of the person and the, the opposite side, uh, I translate as a small, small man, xiao ren, small man, okay? Or we call the petty man. Uh, but small man is not a, not a bad person. Basically, you don't want to be the small man, okay? Because you want to be a Junzi. So if you are not Junzi, you are small man. So there's many times Confucius will say, uh, uh, Junzi is A, not B. Xiao, xiao ren, small man is B, not A. Okay, many, many times, uh, four times in the Confucius. So that's uh, Confucius logic. So here, there's a two words. So and B, okay. So I, most of translation call so as all embracing. That means not a vessel. You are a person, a complete person, okay. B means you are group with other people together. So it's a partisan, okay. So that's the most translation. But I like to comment on Will's version. He said the translation said the Junzi is. Virtual, but not powerful, not unpowerful, right? Not focus on power. And the small man is all on power, not uh, virtual. That's an interesting translation because he, the author translated this word, be competition as a power, okay? And all bracing completes as virtual. 
That's another interesting way to look at. So I think that one is, in, in my opinion, it's very interesting uh, translation. 2.15, the master said, learning is not, learning but not thinking makes you lose what you have learned. Learning but not about thinking but not learning put you in a, predict, a predicament. So I think that here, I think most translation called the uh, uh, paradox, okay? And that's why I keep among the translation because this word, uh, paradox means dangerous. But I think that this word has been used many, many times in ancient texts, okay? Even its original meaning is dangerous. That means you are being chased around and you are being cornered. So that's the situation. But uh, this word has been used many, many times in uh, uh, not describe the physical danger, usually describe the dangers or you are in the perplexity, okay, when you are studying. So not, not only in Confucius, also in Zhuangzi, in Tao Te Ching, many places all use this word as Dai, okay. So, uh, so uh, I think, uh, Perilous is a original meaning, but I will prefer like a predicament or some the perplexity, this kind of word, because it's uh, even during this time already being used as a uh, means when you study, you got cornered, you don't know where to go. 216, okay, the master said, criticizing different teaching is harmful. Um, I think this one has many, many different translation and I try to find out many different translation. One is said, study heresy, study different teaching is harmful. Some said attacking, attacking, attacking uh, different teaching is harmful. Uh, because of the Chinese language, we never know, okay, what's really mean. Because this word say, this is harmful, but we don't know. Uh, Confucius say, starting different teaching is harmful. Or he said, Attacking, attacking different uh, teaching. This teaching is harmful. So this word means this. So we don't know it means studying, studying uh, different teaching is harmful or said the teaching, the different teaching itself is harmful. So this one is, uh, they have many, many different uh, in, uh, explanation on this one. So that's really up to you. Uh, how are you going to understand this one? But one thing I like to mention is uh, at that time, Confucians, Confucian teaching is not an orthodoxy. So there's no reason to uh, consider uh, Confucius is criticizing uh, uh, other school. I think that he is more talking about don't criticize it, not talking about other school is not good. That's just my opinion. But you know, that's the, uh, 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 this one I will leave the uh, interpretation open because I really have no consensus on this one. Yeah, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, before we uh, go to Allison and Jade, I do want to go to Amon. I will try to be brief. Um, yeah, I think Jason's interpretation of 16 is spot on, honestly. Um, there are other points in the analytics where uh, Confucius talks about if I am walking with three other people, I can learn from each of them. I can take what they do well and I can examine what I don't like in myself and re, you know, reformulate it. So he doesn't seem to be 
at all chauvinistic about his his teaching being the only teaching. He's very omnivorous when it comes to knowledge. And I think he encouraged the same in his in his students. Um, and that brings me to the discussion of uh, Zygol. First, we were talking about Yunwei, and then we talk about all these absolutely virtuous characteristics of the Junsa. Now we talked about Zygon and start talking about the pitfalls of getting too big for your britches, which is almost the running theme, I think, if there is one that you could say it sort of comes out here. The idea of the Junsa versus the Shaoren or the small man, it is common in Chinese idioms to refer to somebody more important or larger than as big. So you'll hear, you know, big brother, big man, big boss. These are all expressions to indicate somebody's importance. And that can really get into someone's head. Hey, I'm the big man here. I'm the big boss. I think Confucius was very savvy in pointing out that the opposite of the Junsa being the small man as the absolute antithesis of what everyone was sort of striving to be in that society. And Zaigong probably as much as anyone was inclined in that direction to be more, you know, he'd had some success and success breeds a desire for more success. It's very interesting to sort of read through the analytics in this way and think about it from the classroom experience with different students. And although you may have similar lessons, you have to teach them differently because each person is going to receive those lessons in a different format. So reiteration, reiteration, reinventation of ideas comes up again and again and again in the analytics. And I think this is a great example where it's reinforcing what we heard earlier about the exemplary man, the virtuoso. But here it's more of a warning about if you're not that, don't get to thinking you are. You know, you need to be certain that you can walk the walk, not merely talk the talk. And that gets at um, that... Uh, 213, where he says, you know, act before you speak and only speak after you act according to what you did. In other words, don't tell me, show me, and then you can tell me about what you've shown me, but only that. Don't prattle on about your next big adventure. I liked um, hearing James's translation in particular because it reminded me, James Leggy being the earliest translator of these works, how much injection there was from that time and place. The idea of instead of partisan or virtue, he talks about being Catholic. Yes. And I, I found that very fascinating considering Leggy was probably a good Protestant Englishman. Um, so there's an implicit uh, I'm trying to think of um, partisanship, even in his choice of how to go about translating uh, Confucius into English. I, I, I appreciate the irony. Um, other than that, the only other thing I'd say I was struck by, and I wanted to thank Margarita for reading Imbahasa because it's been one of the more lyrical translations to my ear, not obviously speaking the language, all I can hear is the rhythm and the tone. And with the Dao Te Ching, the poetry kind of came out in the Bahasa as much as anything else where I could hear those rhythms much easier. Here I can hear the staccato cliff note lessons of Confucius, you know, write this down, write this down, write this down. And his students just frantically trying to scrap together the master's knowledge and then it being compiled in this very terse very sort of this real staccato sort of pattern 
it's a very different sort of sound than a text like the Tao Te Ching. But although I don't necessarily enjoy it more, I appreciate being able to get that from the text. Wonderful comments as always. And I do want to come back to this uh, dynamic between power and virtue uh, that was noted in Will's translation, um, because I think that that's a very important point that um, Confucius was actually uh, trying to point out in his teachings uh, at that particular moment in time, um, as that most people would be seeking power in the I, you know, he was obviously uh, proposing a, a virtue, taking a virtuous approach to, uh, to life and um, maybe wasn't terribly successful politically for that. Uh, but you, you too can correct me uh, if I'm wrong about that. But I wanna, I wanna come back to, I promised uh, Allison and Jade that they would be able to share their thoughts uh, on whatever they feel uh, either the first passages that we were um, uh, discussing or uh, verses or chapters, uh, what is it, uh, 11 through 13, or I forget what the actual number was. Um, <clears throat> thir uh, I think it was 13 through 16. But um, Allison? Um, yeah, I was thinking about the... Um the relationship between this idea of virtue and um, the, the political situation going on at the time, because I was thinking about how, and I don't know that much about Chinese history, so I'm, I'm trying to learn, but um, the idea of the warring states and then Confucius trying to bring some order to this with this idea of virtue. And it also kind of relates to Socrates and you know all of the wars going on in Greece at the time. And he was also very concerned with virtue. So um, that was just a thought that I'd had about it. Just noticing that connection. Um, we'll go to Aman and Jade, if, if you don't mind. Jade. I just wanted to really quickly say, um, Allison was asking about the warring states that actually would have been after his time. He, uh, Socrates lived during what's called the spring and autumns uh, period, which was the predecessor to the warring states. So, he kind of saw that calamity on the horizon. Okay. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Jade. So what I am finding is that, um, I guess I'm kind of coupling the two things that I was noticing um, from the previous chapter and from this chapter um, and about how we kind of view people and um, the link of that with power and virtue. Um, I teach a lot of kids who have special needs and it's very interesting. Um, I think in, today, in today's language, it would just simply be considered ableism to a certain point, but it's interesting how those in power privilege their ways of knowing and being. And it kind of, um, I don't have a better word, but it disenfranchises the ways of knowing and being that other people have. So it, it kind of, um, it removes aspects of their identities because we can't really identify them because they're not um, communicating them in ways that we can decipher. And I have one student um, he is nonverbal. I don't really know how much he knows. And one day um, I was kind of, uh, I was stumped because I didn't know what he was trying to communicate to me. So, and now I kind of say this to most of my students, um, if I can't understand what they're trying to tell me is that I'm not smart enough to understand what you're trying to communicate to me is basically what I tell them. Because I recognize that there is a bit of a bias on the fact that the way that I communicate and the way that I know um, and understand things is the right way. And because, and if he can't, okay, trying to say this concisely, if he can't understand the way that I communicate, which is more or less the way most people communicate, um, 
he's considered unintelligent usually. If I can't communicate the way that he does, somehow I maintain my intelligence. So it's, it's just, and again, I come from um, a school of thought that my mother kind of gave me where it's kind of, um, where the virtue kind of lies in recognizing the virtue in others. And so for me, I think that also does give someone power because when you see, I don't know how to explain that part. So I'm gonna leave that there. But I think there is something um, to the concept, even though the interpretation may or may not be accurate of examining the, the, the fact that virtue is a pathway to power. Because when people trust you, they will do more for you. And when people will do more for you, you have the power to do lots of stuff. So I'll leave it at that. That's an excellent point. You know, I, I think that virtuous people are tend to be more trusted. They also tend to be harmed quite often, but they do uh, they do earn people's trust, uh, and they tend to be the the type of people that you would like to lead. Uh, it doesn't always occur that way. I, and I also uh, I appreciate your comments. I'm assuming that you're referring to uh, two nine as far as the communication with his students uh, as well. Um, so uh, great comments, Jade. Uh, so we have actually quite a few people in line. Um, so uh, I have Jason, Will, uh, I don't know if it was Margarita or Kevin first, uh, but we'll figure that out after we go to to Jason. Yeah, um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, let me share this um, screen builds. Uh, I'd like to add some comment on uh, 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 Will's translation, even I think that's a great translation. Yeah, but, me too. Yeah, but I think that there's something I just have to point out something. Uh, I think it's probably over, okay. Not, uh, when I say the over interpretation, okay. even it's good, okay. So uh, 2.14, okay. The translation, uh, 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 Will's translation called uh, the Junzi is through virtue. Okay, basically he talked about this word, so, okay, which doesn't mean virtual at all. It means over embracing, complete, okay, fail. That's the meaning. But again, because you want to be fail, because you want to comprehend it, you are thinking about virtual. That's in this way. But this word doesn't mean virtual at all. But that's the second step interpretation. Uh, B is uh, so, but not B. B, if you look at the size, it looks like two person racing, okay? That means a competition. So in the words, if you stick, stick, uh, stick with this word, that means competition. So I think if we call the partisan or partisanship, probably makes sense. But you say by power, through power, I can understand, but actually I just want to mention, you know, it's not in this world. That's another interpreter's, uh, translator's interpretation. But even this interpretation is very good. So that's the thing I like to point out. And another thing it's about is this one. Uh, Will's translation talk about devoted to an orthodoxy study is harmful. Uh, this one, I have to say, I disagree, okay? So, because the translator consider this word, criticizing, attacking, as study. I think th this word being used as a study, devoting, is modern meaning, not the ancient meaning. Ancient means attack, criticizing. So, I don't see you consider as a study heresy or study unorthodoxy, I don't see that's right because uh, this word being used as a study only in the uh, modern sense, not in, in the modern, not in the ancient time. And uh, I don't think uh, Confucius will talk about unorthodoxy because he just one follow the tradition he never think about he is orthodoxy. He just think he's doing right. And he, I don't see he criticize other school. 
he just say this one is not good. I, I don't like this one, but he didn't say this school is bad. The, the concept of school orthodoxy doesn't show up during that time. It only show up the later time after uh, the China got united in the Han Dynasty. So that's just I just be a little bit picky on this word. So I just like to uh, let everyone know. You know that's the uh, the thing. It's uh, uh, I don't think that's fit to the original text. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and there's a comment in the chat uh, expressing the appreciation that the work that you put into this, and, and I most certainly do as well. Um, so, uh, and that, that is interesting. I do want to hopefully get, if we have time to get uh, to speak about how partisanship is actually associated with power. Uh, and then how virtue is associated in, uh, with being nonpartisan, essentially. Um, so I've actually done uh, an injustice, and I Jay, uh, James had his hand up before everyone. So I um, will call on James next, uh, and then I'll come to you, Will. After. I have to assert, assert superiority or primacy here. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know. I, I just have to. I just have to be fair to everyone. So it's right. uh, yeah. It's a restored balance. <laughs> that tickled me. Okay. So um, the first two. The first one. I think uh, kind of like uh, is like a circle. So no, there's a circle between um, uh, saying something and doing it. Right. So, yes. so we, you know, we say, we say, we, we, we often say we're going to do something and then maybe we'll do it. <laughs> that's great. So what, that's really what Confucius, I think, is attacking here is uh, be careful that you don't say you're going to do something and then not do it. Make sure you do it first and then later say, I did it, you know, and then, then take credit. And then it becomes a, it becomes a model. It becomes a saying. And then somebody else can do it, and they'll they'll say, you know, I did it, or James did it, and you know, it becomes so the 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 cycle of uh, of uh, saying and acting becomes uh, becomes uh, a very positive becomes a positive tool, and of course, never uh, never a uh, lie or a procrastination. So I think that's the uh, that's the what what, ha what we have to avoid, and then um, thirteen. Uh, I'm oh, sorry, number 14 is um, really interesting because um, the way I see it, uh, this, this uh, person who can, um, uh, who is uh, more open, the open person or the educated person doesn't compare himself to others. And I think that's true. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good, it's a kind of like a good rule for, uh, for debate. It's a good rule for uh, life. And then the ordinary person um, does that, and as a result, always finds himself superior to others. In other words, when you uh, sort of like compare yourself to others, usually, well, you're going to, you know, end up finding yourself superior. So that's a good way to tell a really superior person in that they don't compare they don't compare. They don't compare themselves to others. They don't compare their group to other groups. They don't compare the present to the past and assert that it's better in some way. Uh, you know, either more ethical or more, um, more uh, 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 have, having higher standards or something like that. So the uh, so the educated educated person avoids that comparison. And merely talks about the substance of of their of their arguments of their learning and so forth. Number fifteen, uh, learning without thinking is useless. Thinking without learning is perilous. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the uh, the the if if uh, if you you know you can do a lot of learning and not have very much use for it, and uh, you know and not, and not not really perform anything. And it won't amount to much. And if you think without learning, of course, that's always uh, that'll lead you into error. Number sixteen is uh, I have a really interesting interpretation of this one, and it's difficult. Like uh, Jason said, I completely agree with you. I think the meaning is the attack, 
And so uh, learn, the um, one who lives to attack ideas shall be harmed. So in other words, if you attack ideas, you are likely to be attacked back. So uh, in other words, uh, it's when you, it's basically when you uh, uh, try to falsify other people's thinking that they're going to, you're either going to lose a friendship or you're going to uh, receive ad hominem responses right. as a result. So those are the, those are the, uh, those are the, uh, those are, th that's a very solid rule for debate, number 16. The one who lives to attack ideas shall be harmed. Make sure that you pr promote the, promote the, promote what you think is true. And if someone says something that is untrue, normally you either look at, you leave it alone or you work around by presenting a solid argument, you know, that, that in refutation, that, 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 that stands by itself. So if they try to refute you with ad hominems and so forth, just uh, it becomes obvious that your argument is superior. Thank you. Great point, James. Uh, you know, just really quickly, I think I like the uh, point is not comparing ourselves to others. One of the most important things, lessons that we can actually have is uh, to compare ourselves to where we were yesterday, not to where other people are today. We have different experiences. So in order to really make progress and become our best self, that it is important not to consider what other people are, are uh, thinking. I also like the idea that how you're talking about the, you know, the risk that we run in sometimes uh, challenging ideas. Uh, you know, when you challenge an idea, one, it's important to challenge it authentically, right? Challenge it on the basis of the premise that's been being made. And then so that mm -hmm. you can, you know, then that is a, that's, that's a virtuous act because you're searching for truth in that particular instance. However, sometimes we often attack ideas just because of the, maybe the persons that, that's saying them. And, and, and we, we attack ideas because they don't necessarily conform with our understanding of the world. Uh, and one thing we, you know, we've kind of learned quite a bit about here uh, just this evening um, is this idea of not integrating information or being having a closed mindset and how harmful that can actually be. Uh, I think it was, I forget which verse it is off the top of my head. I want to say um, uh, 16. It, it was six. Well, that was, it was 16, but there was even a verse in the first, uh, first four or five that we had read. Um, it was, oh, uh, nine, I think, or was it? No, it was 11. I'm sorry. It was 11. So, uh, but yes, just the, the, the harm that can come exactly from not necessarily uh, engaging in an authentic way and, and incorporating new information and searching for truth. Uh, great points, as always. Uh, so we have quite a few people in the queue. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and, and take a step back for a moment. And we have, I have next on my list, um, I have Will followed by Margarita, followed by uh, Kevin or Penny. Thanks. Uh, I just wanted to speak to um, putting Zigong asked about, um, he, uh, um, Confucius said to act first and then um, talk later, basically. And uh, uh, this was like specially made for me because I will think about stuff and um, plan on things and then I will tell somebody and I will even get like congratulated as if I'd actually done the thing and I will end up never doing the thing. And um, uh, cause I, I just, uh, I like to think about stuff and talk about stuff um, but I have trouble actually following through and doing the thing. So this, this was just advice um, that, um, I really um, appreciate, um, and uh, yeah, that's all, thanks. 
No, I, it's very, very practical advice, and I'm sure it's not only hitting home for you. Uh, I can tell you for certain I have uh, very similar issues. Uh, but it, it, there's, there is a very, it's very wise um, in the sense that when you're talking about character, you're, you know, you're really thinking about your actions, not necessarily the words that you're using to express what you may do. Um, so I, I think that that's a very important part is that, you know, the, I, 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 one of the main things of the way I define character is your actions, not just what you say, but what you do. Uh, so that's a very, it's a very important and virtue. It's how you act in the world. So, uh, very much appreciate the comment and, uh, you're not just recognize you're definitely not alone in that area. Um, so. Next is Margarita, um, and then I'm going to, Kevin, I'm going to go to Penny because she's taking the time to log in from New York with us this evening. Yeah, Brian. And, and, <laughs> and so uh, I am extremely appreciative of that. Uh, so uh, go ahead, uh, Margarita. Yes. Um, actually, uh, once Jason asked me that, I start to realize that Jun C is translated differently in different texts in Bahasa Indonesia. So in 12, Junsi is uh, translated as wise man, orang bijak, orang budiman, so like the sage. But 13 and, and forward uh, and onward, they, so it's, it's translated as satria. It's quite interesting, this superior person in Indonesia, it's already translated into its component. So. A superior person should be wise man and also courageous man, like a gentleman, satria. So how do you see about this? I mean, is there any like, I don't know, formal definition or I don't know, maybe the whole chapter will explain more about that, but I'm quite interested why Confucius tried to make their student to see this Junsi as the, the goal the, the, uh, in their teaching. Yeah, that's my question, thank you. Yeah, uh, let me respond to this one. I think this one is very important. And that's why uh, when we, there's a few words I insist to use the original uh, Chinese name. Junzi is one very important. And the Xiao, which is a filial piety, and the Ren, which is benevolence. Because this is the word, uh, I would say the key subject in this teaching. And unfortunately, the translator, they use different words all over the place, even in the same text. So I think that will dilute uh, or mislead uh, any reader. So uh, that's why I please pay attention on the, when I call it Junzi and the mark on your translation, because I think that's the, they all in the same word. and. Uh, why Confucius saw so this one is important? I think that's a Confucius revolution because Junzi original means the low ranking aristocrat, okay, the very low rank. So basically it's the basic uh, civil service people, the people doing the, the job. But Confucius kind of like break the line between the aristocracy, aristocrat and the commoner. So he said that like, if you are doing well, you can be treated as a Junzi. And then when you are Junzi, you will be governed by Li, which is a ritual. Okay, you don't, we don't use the law, the punishment to govern you. So I think that's kind of his idea. So I think the word Junzi, or sometimes translated as noble man, superior man, a virtual man, but they all mean Junzi. And I, I will uh, suggest everyone pay attention on this word. And the next chapter, next book, will put a lot, you will start to see they use the Li, which is richer. Okay, and that's also important word. And then in book four, uh, there was confused, <coughs> the end of the day will focus more on Ren, which is benevolence. That's also important. I think at least for now, the Junzi, uh, Li, and uh, Ren, these three words probably we should, you know, <clears throat> at least the three Chinese words we need to learn at this moment. Sorry, uh, Jason. So other than a superior man, Junzi can also be like a decent man, just to yeah. look like 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we just like yeah. Optimal, but also like just regular <sighs> but decent. Yeah. So you can so basics. Okay, that's confused as famous about this. People keep asking what's the meaning of run. People keep asking what's the meaning of jeans. Keep people keep asking what's the meaning of xiao. Confucius never give a fixed answer. Always mm. give a different answer. But at the beginning, it's I think it's nature because that's talking about virtue, right? It should be different for different person at a different time. Just like if you read uh, Plato's, uh, the, the very simple one, Menos, right? When Menos asks the virtue, what is virtue? Is a virtue teacher book? Socrates' answer is the nature of virtue. And then talk about like, does that mean virtue for different person at a different time? Turn out the Socrates is teaching the slave kids how to do math. How come going this? Because same as Confucius, because he have no fixed answer. Okay. So Confucius turned to like two words answer, very simple. And Socrates will talk for, I don't know, three hours and they don't get the answer. I think that's the same, same kind of sage. <laughs> Thank you for that answer. Very, very good. Um, Penny, very nice to see you and thank you for logging in. Uh, we can't hear you, unfortunately. Looks like you're unmuted now. You hear me now? Yeah. Yes? Yes, I can hear you oh. now, thank you. All right, it looked like it was before. Oh, I just had a quick, a few quick thoughts like on, on 2.13, um, kind of a, a English version I thought might be of something that's kind of almost like a, you know, a rule of action, you know, is like, actions speak louder than words and you know kind of a little moral rule and that's what i felt maybe he was saying to zigong kind of too you know like okay you know we're going to judge you from your actions not from your words you know just don't talk you know because I, I felt like maybe if he had become rich then he uh he felt kind of that he was a pretty good person. And so he kept, you know, trying to get um, Confucius to kind of say, oh, you know, you're a great Gen Z. Right. And he's kind of like, well, you know, <laughs> I look at what you do, not what you say. So that the actions speak louder than words. And I was thinking on, on 214, kind of like when he compared the Gen Z to the partisan, and the, the words that kind of came to my mind for partisan is someone who is self-serving. Mm. So he's motivated, you know, for himself or for his own little group. And uh, Confucius is basically saying, no, you know, you've got to be, have a, a big picture view. You have to be virtuous or, or be looking at society as a whole and acting that way not just for your own particular little interests. And uh, then again, in the next verse on 215 about studying, cause it's, I feel kind of like he's saying, um, you know, if you study, then you have to reflect on what you're studying and you have to apply it to something. Because if you don't, then, you know, it's meaningless. Right. And on the other hand, if you try to, think a whole lot about things, but you have no background and no basis for what you're thinking, you know, then, then it's, it's not going to be useful in any sense to anybody. I have, um, for 216, this one translation, and maybe Jason could comment on this because it's very different than what he had. Um, um, it says, the master said, one who sets to work on a different strand does damage. And the commentary that the translator made was a vague but much cited passage 
that seems to give teamwork priority over individual initiative. This is the one with competition that you have in your translation. Yeah, this is the one that what he was saying, criticizing the different teachings. Yes. Yeah, one who sets to work on a different strand does damage. Is it Jason? Uh, would you? I, I, I do have some opinion on that as well. Yeah, I, I think I already did uh, explain. It's uh, this this one is very con uh, they all have a different uh, uh, because they, okay the Chinese words say first word, gong means attractive, but some be, some people translate as study. Okay, so that's the first thing. Okay, the first word, start think of put in your mind. That's a study or attack. That, that okay, that's a different translation. Personally, I believe it should be study because uh well, it should be attacked or criticized because study or devote that's the modern meaning. Second word, attacking or study the heresy or the Chinese word means different end, okay? So some people will consider different ends means unorthodoxy. But I don't think Confucius time, he has the concept of unorthodoxy or orthodoxy. I don't think so. He only think about overall, we are all people, we are all together. So I don't think he means unorthodoxy. That means different end. So you have to refer back to the doctrine of the mean. You have to go in the mean, not on two sides, which is radical, right? So doctrine of mean. So he's talking about the doctrine, the mean, the, the mean, not on the both end. So you put all together means criticizing the end is harmful. So we don't know what he mean harmful. He means criticizing the end or study the end is harmful or means, or he said study or criticizing uh, the end, which is harmful. Okay, so we, we don't know what he meant, but I just have to make sense for him. So I will translate as criticizing different teaching, which is on the both end mm -hmm. is harmful. So he suggests the student, don't criticize, just focus on what you are studying. That, that's just my, my interpretation. But with all this possibility, you can come with any kind of solution you want to get. So, <laughs> Thank you. I hope I'm not making it too complicated, but you know, that. No, I, that was very clear uh, for me. Uh, and I, and Penny, I appreciated the, you know, what you shared about the, you know, looking at partisanship as self-serving as, a, you know, and kind of that relates to the idea of how people would seek power, uh, you know, as opposed to virtue, uh, as we've heard in Will's uh, translation. And um, yes, and, and, and applying your thinking and, you know, that's applying your knowledge is, uh, that's wisdom. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's acting in the world. So both ex excellent comments, excellent question. And thank you for logging in. Um, uh, so I think I have Kevin now, and I th think I saw James, yes, thank you. James after that. Just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Yes, go ahead, Kevin. Thank you for waiting yeah, patiently. Uh... 216 is a 30th one. It's uh, so you can, when the word is small, you could be interpreted so many directions. But if we go by words, I, I, I would you know, uh, agree with Jason's translation. It probably thing. I already put on the chat. It's some keyword, gung, I didn't put the gung first, attack. Basically, if enemy uh, and friend, or you, you consider enemy use attack, right? So. Uh, or criticize for word perspective. And the uh, yi is the yi. It's the first is different. The do another another side. If you buy if from politician, this is governing, right? Politician, you left or right? 
love you not agree with is right. It's okay. But you attack it, you complete, okay, you are dummy, you know, on one side, see another side, that's harmful. You didn't solve the root problem. Even furthermore, we, you know, criticize about ideology. Back to 1930s, what's the ideology like that time? Communists is so popular. They are crazy that time, people. And, and so the people have something makes sense. The problem still exists and get enlarged. We didn't, didn't solve problem. However, we consider that uh, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a uh, both scary, Harris, right? You said the English words, consider it's bad. You cannot talk about the communist because lack, lack uh, political correct. So we are done kind. If you quite close your eye or read a book, yes, there's something they are uh, pursued it still makes sense. And we slowly put an axiom, like used to be how to pray and reach, it's, it's still um, useful use that. Um, I'm going to backward for 15, it's uh, about the learning and thinking. Yes, it's uh, the para parallel we need not just learning, we need also thinking what we're learning, question about ourselves and knowledge we got. And the 14 about it, two and B is a surround the circle and uh, compare. If from Junzi here, uh, by the going to side track, this here in Dao De Jing, only talk with the sage. It's a Sheng Leng. Here we consider it's a Zhongzi, it's, it's a different. And also, if you use, uh, uh, use uh, uh, one format from the Dao De Jing chapter two, if you consider beauty as beautiful, beauty and ugliness arise. So if you consider, I'm going to maybe uh, could use the format to put it here. If you consider Jungzi as Jungzi, the small man is going to arise. So the, we, we see those danger is so, however, for that, that's on one side, but I'm here, I want to see two. So Jungzi consider not just himself, around people surround. If you see all people surround of you smiling, they are happy, you are happy too. Mm. If it be the second compare competition, I'm going to beat you down. I'm a champion. I'm a winner. So I'm smiling. Just not necessary. Uh, 13, I, you know, uh, 213, it's actually a penny great point. Accent speaks louder than words. For me, also another EDM called, uh, I'm still not, another uh, EDM called Ye Xing Yi Zi, word, accent, synchronized. You do what you see, you see what you do. It's always so. Here's for, uh, as general people see, I do something good, Joe, I don't need to tell you. After you're done, you notice or, or you, you um, or I see you tell you later. So that's normally another tra traditional culture in the Eastern. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, great comments. Uh, you know, and I especially like how you also framed the idea of competition, how we look at this as kind of a win lose proposition. Uh, and how that da is dangerous and how we view each other. Um, uh, and I also appreciated your comments about, uh, was it 215 um, with thinking, uh, but how to look internally, not just externally. Um, so great comments. Um, James, you're next. Uh, you're muted. Finally, I'm muted. Um, sorry. Uh, the uh, I just wanted to comment on what Jason and uh, 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 
Kevin said, which I agree with, you know, the, uh, uh, the 16 and 18 to me are a little bit political. So I just that that that's 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 interesting because there's a strand in I think uh, uh, Confucius's thought, which is uh, taking care of the uh, political, uh, which in terms of like caution and and so forth, and uh, so uh, just uh, not uh, uh, not um, getting uh, being a skeptic. In other words, a person who is uh, always a skeptic is um, kind of like on rough ground because uh, while he always, the person who is a skeptic always sounds intelligent. And, you know, so it's normally like if they're very well educated, they, they, they sound fairly intelligent and so forth, but they're also possibly making enemies. So that there's this idea from Confucius, you know, that uh, you have to, if you're, if you're in the world of, uh, in, in your, if you're a Jin, Jinju or Junji, the, the, the world of intellectual business You've got to be careful about offending people, especially if they might be more powerful than you are. So, actually, comments. Um, no, I mean, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, Aman. Yeah, I only got a little bit of time here left, but I wanted to thank everyone. The discussion on uh, the analytics tonight has been very in illuminating. Um, like I said before, this is not a text I studied nearly as much as the Tao Te Ching I am familiar with it, but I'm, I'm partial to the teachings of Taoism to some degree. However, I, it's graduation season, and I had a graduation to attend, and watching that very large orchestrated ritual and pageantry, I realized Taoists would not be good at organizing something like that. It, it would never go off without a hitch. Yeah. You need the Confucian virtuoso values of other person mindedness in order to be faithful to sort of the ritual and the procession and the process and to acknowledge the tradition of it while simultaneously allowing for the nuance of the reoccurring. The amazing thing, I think, and one of the most frustrating things for a lot of people studying Confucian, Confucianism is that Confucianism has developed into so many sets of rules in so many different cultures, and they're un, unwritten rules that it, seems to be almost a fetish of ritualization and a fetish of, um, you know, performing human heartedness or performing benevolence or, or that not necessarily feeling it, not necessarily embodying. It occurs to me that the modern Junsa, we have kind of a version that exist in the Western world in most um, newspapers and magazines. And that's the modern advice column. I'm thinking of Dear Abby and the decades and decades of thoughtful, considered advice that had to be doled out again and again because there aren't set written rules that people can observe in every single situation that fit every need. What you what you need is somebody who is skilled at recognizing what is fundamentally important in the relationships between individuals and fostering those relationships. And we've probably all had this experience. If you've attended a function where you were out of place, but somebody made you feel very welcome and very, you know, that your contribution was welcome, wanted, and vital for this whole thing to happen in the first place. And you just wind up thinking, wow, that was such a great host or guest or person I interacted with. You've encountered what Confucius is getting at, at this idea of the Junsa. In one of the first uh, chapters, he talks about how all these virtues to address and build shall ren and then after all of that if you have any energy left dedicate it to study 
And so all of his ethic, all of his, his mindset is about fostering these interconnections between people. And only after that can you go back and sort of glance over some of the old rule books to see if you can get some better ideas from those as well, like reading Dear Abby. Maybe her advice can give you some good ideas, but you can't apply it strictly and straight across to your own situation. You'd want to have her virtuosity of human understanding. Um, so that's what this made me think of tonight was Dear Abby in a strange way. And my respect for the post-neo-modern Confucian, I don't know what iteration of Confucian we're in this many centuries later, but these ideas still surface amongst people over time because people recognize the importance and the need to foster good social interaction, good relationships between others. And to that end, I wanna thank all of you for being here because it is a wonderful group to get to attend. And now that I'm once again healthy and hopefully in the not very distant future, I will be able to have more leisure time and come dressed for the occasion. I have to sign off. It, it's great seeing you all. It's 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 wonderful having you, Amon. Um, uh, you know, it hasn't been the same without you uh, the past uh, couple of weeks. So, nali, nali. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you know, so we would like you, you know, just just rest and get better. Um, and it's your contributions are always enlightening to all of us. So, uh, it is, very it much, is. very much appreciated. And uh, yes, and looking forward to oh. seeing you. Uh, you know, uh, in the flesh. In the flesh. It'll It'll happen once my flesh is presentable. Okay. Okay. We appreciate that. Good night, <laughs> all. Thank you. Take again. care. Take care. So, thanks. Uh, you know, thank you, Jason and Amon. Uh, we didn't get as far as we we anticipated. I am going to promise to keep a little bit more of a tight schedule in the future. Uh, but I thought tonight was uh, we had a great conversation. Um, let me just do uh, some announcements for some upcoming events uh, with 52 Living Ideas. Um, tomorrow night, we have Speak, Your, Speak on Your Approach to, uh, to and a, a Perspective on Comprehensivism, uh, and that's at 9 o'clock tomorrow night. We'll be covering the Bhagavad Gita on Thursday and Friday. Uh, that's this week. And um, this upcoming Saturday... I know that there's an Asian philosophies meetup still because I had seen it come across my calendar. Um, if you give me a minute, I should come up again. Uh, actually, I don't have it. I don't know if Jason's there, but I don't have it. Um, so, uh, Look for Jason's meetup uh, this weekend. Um, I believe it's. I believe it's this weekend. Uh, let me just check on my phone really quickly. Sometimes they come up on my phone first. Um, anyway, I, I I'll just tell you to keep an eye out for it. Um, and uh, we'll, we should be having events this weekend. I don't know. I've spoken to Shrikant about what. Uh, we may be doing this weekend, but in any case, you know, I appreciate everybody coming here, James, Will, Brian, uh, Penny, who's left, since left, but uh, Margarita, it's wonderful to have you back, uh, you know, Connie, Brian, and Kevin, uh, always, uh, this is a really good group, um, and, uh, and I'm getting used to the analects, I was really a little bit, um, uh, you know, a little bit saddened that when the Dow came to an end, but I am enjoying the analytics and uh, I'm looking forward to working through the rest of this with you. And uh, so everybody have a wonderful evening and I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Take care. Yeah.